Hey, Teddy K here for the Best Buy blog, and in this video review, we take a look at the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4, Samsung's latest foldable that is pretty familiar, but could also change your phone habits too. The Galaxy Z Flip 4, or Z Flip 4, depending on where you live, uh, is very much an iterative upgrade from what Samsung came with before. So the Flip 3, if you had that, you're looking at this, you're gonna find a lot of familiarity. Yes, some of the colors are different and some of the components on the inside are different, but the functionality for the most part is similar. And to me, this is Samsung, yet again, for another year, trying to prove that this form factor and concept works. The way I look at it, the mo for the most part, it does. I, I see more of these phones now out in the wild than I used to. So there is a sign that people are kind of taking to that as opposed to say the Fold 4, which is not only a lot more expensive, but it, it's just, it's a different phone in how you're carrying it, that weight, all those things. This still maintains what is a familiar form factor to all of us as far as a smartphone goes. Now, the key thing though, is because we are using the same type of glass, it is a little bit uh, stronger in this case. So this is Gorilla Glass Victus Plus. So a little stronger protection. Uh, you get a you know a pretty nice display. It's still the same display in terms of you know, resolution and, and, and color and all that. Nothing's really changed. Brightness is still the same. So all those factors are still there, but you also still get that crease in the middle. And again, I know it's not gonna be as noticeable if you're looking at the phone straight on, but if you tilt it just a little bit, then it's there. And that is one of those things that you're gonna to have to live with if you're gonna get this phone. But I feel like after a while, you're not going to notice it as much and you're gonna kind of live with it. So if, again, if you're watching a video straight on, you might not see it as much, but then again, I don't know, everybody's kind of different. And when I showed this phone to people that I know, friends and acquaintances, they, they caught on to that pretty quick. But I should also mention that they're not used to having a phone like this either. So uh, I will ask them, like, if you were to use this phone after a while, do you think that it's something you would notice? Would it bother you? Again, very subjective and certainly not scientific. But it's interesting that, you know, I got a mixed, I got some mixed responses there. Some people were willing to try it. Some people thought, no, uh, you know, I think it would bother me too much, something I would notice. So when I look at this phone, I'm reminded of not only how I interpreted the first flip phones, but also the way Samsung is marketing this one. You'll notice that when they, when they, well, all the ads or any commercials or anything that you've seen for this phone, they play up a lot on, on its usability or how you can articulate it. You know, taking photos by planting it like this or like this or like this. You know, basically all kinds of different ways that you can position the phone to do different things. Now we already know from previous the previous models that if you want to do video, well, video call, web, you know, you could basically do it like this, just set it down on the table and then you're looking at it and that's it. That's still there, all that's still there. You can also force apps to work in a split screen situation. So if you're watching a game on the top and then you're maybe following other scores or you're doing something else, maybe messaging somebody on the lower half, you can still do that. It's, it works exactly the same way. And I will say kudos to Samsung for kind of forcing that uh, so that apps that aren't necessarily optimized for that can do it in a way that actually kind of works and just feels pretty pretty fluid. That's where that, so there's a side menu when you pull in, so you pull in uh, apps from the side menu, right? So I'm gonna show you here. So you, you pull them in here, right? You can pick the ones that you want and then you just drag and drop and that way you can populate both halves of the screen. From there, you'll be able to also determine, okay, do I want to see more of this app, more of that app? All that functionality is not new. That, that's all been there before. But again, I have to stress that the focus here is also on what you can do with this phone when you articulate it. So that's where the photography part comes in for me because that was always the part that I felt stood out the most. You can take photos with this in a way that's very difficult to do with other phones. Uh, you can prop it up like this. I mean, there's just so many different ways like this. If you're taking landscape shots, you wanna take long exposure shots in pro mode way easier to do it on this phone than any other one because again you don't need anything to, you don't need to lean it on anything you just set it down tap to press you know tap the shutter to, to take the shot and that's it so I, I i feel like even if you're taking group shots and you set on a timer if you framed your shot you can put set it down and then run to get into the frame as well something that's not as easy to do like i said with a regular phone so the problem to me though with the photography side is that unfortunately you're not getting flagship level performance. So while you're technically paying flagship prices for this phone, the, the photo quality is gonna be more mid-range. It's not necessarily bad, don't get me wrong. The Galaxy S22 had a very good camera, 
that is the, those are the camera components that are in this phone. So you're still gonna get similar shots, let's say on the ultra wide camera, they're gonna match very much what happened or what you got with the Flip 3, whereas the main camera is gonna be very similar, if not the same, pretty much to the Galaxy S22. Not the Plus or the Ultra, just the regular 22. Although the 22 and the Plus had very, very similar uh, camera components. The other factor here is battery life. And that is always gonna be a contentious issue, I think, with a phone that folds because the battery can't, you can't put the battery in the same way. So th that was an issue with the Flip 3. And I remember that for me, the Flip 3 was kind of a, a trade-off. You got the functionality, you got to do cool things with the phone. It was unique, it was a novelty at the time, it was cool, but you weren't gonna make it through a full day in a lot of cases. That's still largely the case with this. I, would, I got about an extra hour or so with this phone, more or less. Not bad, um, I mean, an extra hour for a phone that wasn't the greatest on battery life is good but it's not going to be a stalwart it, this is not a workhorse in that regard that's just going to stay on and keep going and going i'm basing this mind you on mixed usage so this is all the things that you would normally do so from browsing to messaging to streaming video you're listening to music uh, even editing photos if you want to do that taking photos all that stuff all just basically all the things you would typically do with a phone that is one thing that you're going to have to kind of work with if you want to go with this phone but again it charges wirelessly so that's okay it can charge pretty quickly too uh, it does not come with a charging brick in the in the case or in the box when you buy this phone but that's standard now for samsung phones so no surprise there either one thing that did occur to me when using this and this goes back to even the previous models that i tested is that there's a certain habitual change that i think can happen so because you have the cover screen here, so you know the cover screen gives you an opportunity to go through a certain setting and also to shortcut your way to certain things. So let's say you have Galaxy earbuds. Uh, doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be the Buds 2 Pro, it could be the other ones too. You can control certain features directly from the cover screen. Music playback, weather, calls, certain you know very basic responses, text messages, uh, the time obviously. Things like that. So some of the basics, even audio recording, you can start that off with this too. Uh, those are very basic functions, but they cover a fair bit of what we already do. And what I realized was that if I'm unfolding the phone less, then I'm being distracted less by other things that I can do on the phone. And again, I, I have no empirical evidence. I have no way to quantify that, but I do think it's kind of interesting how I, I started to change a little bit in terms of my habits using this as opposed to a regular phone. And I wonder if that is something that's going, that we're gonna see more of as foldable phones, really, because I think foldable phones are, going, are coming. Uh, Samsung will not be the only ones making them. Others are gonna be making them. They're gonna be a standard part of the smartphone lineup, I think for various uh, brands. So I feel like Samsung is gonna take quite a bit of credit for that, but hey, you know, they, they really helped to popularize this form factor. It's not super popular yet, but I see more of them out there. Maybe you do too. And we'll see where it goes. But for now, again, very iterative uh, compared to the Flip 3. If you have the Flip 3, I don't think you need to upgrade to this at all. You're good with where you are. But if you had the original Flip, I think you're gonna find this a pretty big difference. So that's my review of the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4. For the Best Buy blog, I'm Teddy K. Thanks for watching. Thank you.